Hello, this is my Nikon Z7, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you five things that I love about this camera, plus a few things I don't like, and I'm gonna share with you some of the images I've been capturing over the last few months. Okay, before we get properly started, I should probably put this video in a little bit of context. First of all, this is my camera. I own the Z7. I bought and paid for it out using my own money. In order to do that, I had to trade in my Nikon D850 and a couple of lenses. But you may be asking, why on earth would I trade in probably the world's best digital SLR to get this camera? Well, that's what we're gonna discuss in this video. Okay, the other thing is that this video isn't supposed to be a full review of the Nikon Z7. I pretty well only shoot landscapes, so I have a really sort of limited scope in which I actually use this camera. So I can't really provide a sort of a diverse or well-rounded review of this camera. The other thing is I can't compare it directly side by side at the same time with another camera. As I said earlier, I sold the D850 to, in order to fund this camera. So I can't put the Z7 beside the D850 to take the same picture and give you some sort of detailed comparison. The other thing is, um, I'm not actually here to try and convince you to sell your digital SLR or try and convince you that you need to get the Nikon, Nikon Z7, far from it. I'm only doing this video because a few people, since I started using this camera back in September 2019, a few people have asked me in the blog what I thought of the camera, why did I change? So I thought I'd address some of these uh, questions uh, in this video. Okay, with that all said, let me tell you the five things I love about the Nikon Z7. Okay, one of the absolute killer features for this camera for me is the EVF. It's an absolute joy to use, particularly as a landscape shooter, because I've got all the information I used to be able to get in the back of the LCD screen, I can now get an EVF. And that's really important to me when I'm working in bright conditions with a lot of glare and light. Sometimes you just can't see that information properly or you can't review your images properly on the back of an LCD screen. So having it all here in the EVF is brilliant. I can view things like the uh, histogram, I can bring up menus, I can see exactly what the camera is gonna shoot. It's a bit like what you see is what you get. Really, really powerful having this in the EVF. I can also check focus, I can zoom into 100% uh, before I take the picture. And then when I do take the picture, I can actually review the image in the EVF as well. Again, really important. It used to be quite tricky sometimes to review images and check for sharpness on the back of the LCD screen, but I can now check it in the EVF. I still use the, the LCD screen, but I can also have the option of using the EVF as well. So for me, this is one of the most powerful features of going mirrorless and why I bought the Nikon Z7. Another compelling reason for me to go with the Nikon Z7 is, of course, the Z mount. Now, I picked up two lenses. I've got the 24 to 70 f4 and the 14 to 30 f4. Now, aside from the size and weight, which I will talk about in just a minute, I will note that the optical quality has been improved uh, from my old f mount lenses. This is particularly noticeable around the outer edges. Sometimes in the 16 to 35 f4, the f mount, I used to get a little bit of softness around the edges, particularly when shooting quite wide but this is almost completely gone in the 14 to 30 F4. The other thing with the Z mount has brought is it allowed Nikon to engineer their lenses in slightly different ways. So I've now got access to the 14 millimeter super wide angle lens in a really small compact size. And the other great thing is that unlike other sort of 14 millimeter lenses, which normally have fixed lens hoods on them, and which meant you had to buy special uh, filter holders and filter systems. I can use this uh, 14 millimeter lens just with my uh, existing 100 millimeter filter kit. Okay, size and weight. Now this used to be something I wasn't actually that bothered about when I had the, the Nikon D850. But as I do more video now and I do more vlogs, I do have to carry about two camera systems quite often and that often means two tripods, two sets of batteries. So bag weight has become uh, not a concern, but something I am actually aware of. 
Now with my D850 and a couple of lenses, that would normally weigh in about 2.7 kilos. With the Nikon Z system and the two lenses, I've got, I shaved off over a kilo of weight. So it's really nice having a slightly smaller, lighter camera and the lenses as well are really compact and small, especially that 14 to 30. That's really amazing bit of engineering that I've got a lens uh, that small and that light, but with that kind of focal length. Now, I will say for the body, even though it's noticeably smaller than the D850, it still doesn't feel light or unusable. It still fits well in my hand, certainly for the type of shooting that I do. So in terms of the ergonomics of the camera, in terms of size and weight, I'm really happy with it. With the Nikon Z7 and its EVF, I now have access to over 493 phase detect autofocus points covering 90% of the frame, which means I can uh, quickly and accurately select a focus point for virtually any part of the image, which is really useful for me as a landscape shooter. Now, with the Nikon D850, looking through the optical viewfinder, you've got that cluster of autofocus points in the middle, but this often meant there wasn't a focus point uh, in, a, in an area that I wanted to focus on. So I'd often have to drop back to the LCD screen and select a focus point that way. And as I talked about the advantages of using the EVF, I didn't always like, uh, or it wasn't always practical to use an LCD screen. So having all this, all these focus points available to me covering a wide range uh, of the image area in the EVF is an absolute killer feature for me. And finally, all the things that I loved about the Nikon D850 are also here in the Nikon Z7. So I can shoot at ISO 64, I've got great dynamic range, I've got high megapixels, 45.7 I think it is. The body's weather sealed, it still does focus stacking, it still does focus peaking. I've got access to snap bridge as well, so I can GPS tag my pictures. And of course, all the batteries from all my previous Nikon cameras are all compatible with this one as well. So I've not had to go out and buy a stack of new batteries. So all those great things that I've loved about my Nikon cameras before, especially the D850, are present here in the Nikon Z7. So just before we move on to talk about the things I don't like about this camera, if you are enjoying this video, please do consider hitting that thumbs up button. And please do leave me a comment. What do you think the future of the digital SLR is? What do you think of the Nikon Z7? What do you think about the Nikon Z system as a whole? Please do let me know in the comments below. And if you are liking this video and perhaps you might want to see more from yourself, please also consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you do, or if you're already a subscriber, remember to click on that little bell icon, that way you'll receive a notification as soon as I post up a new video. No camera system is perfect, and the Nikon Z7 is no different. Now, while clearly I love my Nikon Z7, and I would never go back to a digital SLR, this camera isn't without its compromises. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that has got to be the single card slot on this camera. Now, quite a song and dance was made about it when it was uh, announced, and probably people were right to talk about it as well, because a camera of this specification should really have two card slots. I've personally been using two card slots since about 2013 when I got my Nikon D600, and I always got it to write uh, my images to both cards at the same time. I take my data quite seriously, and I do take lots of steps to protect and back it up, so moving to a single card thought was a bit of a compromise for me. That I, I can't get I can't get away from that. Even though I've never had a card fail, I would still prefer to have two cards. Now where I do take some solace is the fact that this is an XQD card, so they are generally going to be a bit more robust. But it still lingers at the back of my mind that I'm still with a single card slot. But that's a compromise I've had to make. While I really love these native Z-mount lenses, there aren't that many of them available. Um, I've got the two that I really use the most, which is the 24 to 70 and the 14 to 30. But I would like to replace my old F-mount uh, 70-200-2.8 with a Z-mount equivalent. I'd probably go the F4. Um, I think the F2.8 Z-mount 70-200 is due out any day. In fact, it might be out even by the time this video comes out. But that lens lineup of available lenses is really poor at the moment, I think. 
I mean, for example, uh, the 105 Macro is on there, but there's no real date against it. So when, when is that coming? There's also, uh, could be quite handy, a 24 to 120 F4 and the 100 to 300 F4. Both Wendy's I might actually consider picking up. So at the moment, while it's not too much of an issue for me because the two lenses I use the most are the ones I've actually got, I'd really like to see that lens line up flushed out. With the smaller camera body, Nikon have reduced the number of physical controls on the camera as well. Now, I almost don't bring this one up because it doesn't really impact me too much in my landscape work. I only mention it because I also shoot live music photography as well. And what I found missing is the AF button which it's allowed me to change the AF mode and the number of points active. So now I have to go into the I menu and then go into a menu option and change it there. It's not quite as quick and as efficient um, as having an AF button. So I almost don't mention the lack of physical controls. It doesn't necessarily impact my landscape work, but I thought it was useful to mention nonetheless. Now, there are a couple of things I dislike about this camera and they're not necessarily unique to the Z7, I might add. So first of all, while it's got a tiltable LCD screen, which is really useful. It's not fully articulated, so you can't bring it out to the side, which A, would have been very useful for me uh, for video, which I, obviously I do do, uh, and also when I'm shooting it in the vertical orientation. And talking of video, it still doesn't do 4K at 50 frames a second. This will make it, again, really useful for the video work that I do. It's still only doing 4K at 25 frames a second. But the, probably the one thing that I dislike most about this camera is if I put it in timer mode, say for example, five seconds, and then the camera goes to sleep, which it does after a reasonably short amount of time, probably to conserve battery. When you bring it out of power saving mode, it's not in the five second timer in your mode, mode anymore. So you have to go into the I menu and switch it back to uh, self timer again. I just find that a little bit annoying, but yeah, that's a minor gripe. Okay, we're just about coming up to the end of this video now, and I do hope you have enjoyed it, regardless of which camera system you are using. Now, as I said at the top of the video, it wasn't my intention to try and convince you to buy a Nikon Z7 or that you need to go mirrorless or the digital SR is dead. Far from it. I just wanted to share my thoughts about this camera. Now, has this camera made me a better photographer? Well, no. Cameras don't make you a better photographer. Taking pictures makes you a better photographer. But for me, um, the Nikon Z7 has improved uh, or, or increased my enjoyment of taking pictures and improved the way I take those pictures, particularly with things like the EVF. So I'm really happy with my purchase and I'm hoping, I'm certainly sorry, looking forward to taking many more great pictures over the years with it. But I do, like I say, hope you have enjoyed this video. And please do consider watching some of my other videos here. I've got some playlists up here. And of course, please do also check out my blog. But until the next one, I'll see you then.